Do you know why you are buried into the ground when you die? Have you ever realized that it's a very common thing for people to be buried into the ground when they die? And when someone rots, they turn into dust. This is because you are made from the dust. Are you aware that a good percentage of the dust under your bed is your skin? You can Google that. Come rain, come sunshine. Switch my heart and do you will find. It's love for you. All I got is love for you. Oh yeah, yeah. So a friend of mine told me a story of when he was in high school a few years back. And he was being taught in their class they had a they were being taught by a teacher from DRC the Democratic Republic of Congo and oh look at that and one day when the teacher was in front you know teaching them a few things i believe it must have been mathematics he the class was making noise and so he got irritated and decided to tell them a story of how he came to Zambia and just how they are taking for granted the peace that they have as Zambians and the opportunity they have to freely learn. And so he was like, Bana ba muzambia mwakwata peace. Ine ba mami wale salula fitumbua fya kutwala kuskulu na mwaiche wandi panuma Masoja wa yisa wa posela grenade muyad nga kali la kapatuka nyalo poa <laughs> I hope you understand what that means <laughs> He was simply trying to say when he was a kid one day as he was trying to go to school the mother was making fritters for him and his brother to take to school and some soldiers came and threw a grenade into the yard and that's how the family was separated. Sad story, but said in a funny way. <sighs> You're welcome to Amazing Minds Bible Talks Part 2. Bruce is not able to be here with me today, but the work must continue. The Bible says the Lord delights in seeing the work begin. Now today we are talking about something uh, quite fundamental to anyone's Christian walk or anyone's Christian journey, if you intend on starting a relationship with God or you have one already, I am giving you some few insights from what I've learned from my walk with God. If you're not following the podcast, you can catch the show every Monday and Friday right here on YouTube. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Mondays and Fridays, we release content 12 hours Central African time. Uh, audio podcasts, okay i guess i prefer video <laughs> so uh i have my diary secret diary here with me that highlights a, a few a couple of experiences i've had with the lord in this journey and i want to share with you about the spirit soul and body because in order to really relate effectively with god you need to understand number one your nature when I talk about your nature, I'm not talking about your destiny or your um, assignment or purpose. I'm talking about your makeup. When God says, let us make man in our own image and likeness. So let's, we'll look at a couple of scriptures. I'm not necessarily preaching, but I'm just, you know, sharing. It was supposed to be a discussion um, with Bruce, but he's not here today. Uh, so let's look at Genesis 1 verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. And now I know, uh, for many people, they believe this to be the appearance of man. But there is something more than that. To understand this well, we need to understand the nature of God himself. When he says, let us make man in our image and likeness, of course, he's referring to him, uh, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
God seems to like to have meetings with himself before he makes decisions. And so he had this discussion with himself and said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. But in order to fully understand what that means, we need to understand the image and likeness of God. And there's something very important that Jesus Christ said to the woman at the well, at the well that makes us understand uh, God. John 4, 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, so God is spirit. Uh, I like the King James Version. It says God is a spirit and those who worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what we need to understand is that the nature of God is spiritual. God is a spirit. Okay, so Firstly, when God made us, he made us in his likeness, spiritual. So we are spirit beings. Let us look at something else that kind of gives us a context uh, and describes God's nature to us. Um, Hebrews 11 verse 3, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which were seen or rather the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay. Wow. So the things that are seen, the things that we see now, the things that have been created, including this flesh, were all made by things that do not appear, things that cannot be seen. So think of it this way. If you today decided to design a car from clay, this is you, a human being, designing something uh, out of an inanimate object. You could decide to breathe life into it, but you don't have the ability. Now, God, being spirit, was in the spiritual realm, okay, which is more real than the realm he created, because that's where he has always existed. So God, being spirit, in a realm which we cannot see, created the things which are seen. So God is in a realm that is superior to the realm we are in. I hope you understand. So the nature of God is that he is spirit and he lives in a realm that cannot be seen. And he created a realm that we can see. And because he gave us dominion over this realm, when he had to come to the earth, he had to be like us. He had to take up a form that can be seen. Now, I remember having a chat with someone uh, a couple of weeks ago. And we we're talking about the scripture where Adam and Eve ate the fruit. And God said, now man has become like one of us. Have you really critically thought about that scripture? Now man has become like one of us. Let's take, for example, where five men in a room and a lady walks in right? We could say, now she has become like one of us, which is implying that she now has a beard, for example, if we all have a beard. Do I have a beard? Anyway, so <laughs> now she has become like one of us because she has a beard. So if she developed, if she grew a beard, we can say she has become like one of us, right? The other interpretation for that could be that if a lady walked into the room and one of us developed breasts, we could say now she has become like one of us, referring to one among us. So when the Bible says now man has become like one of us, is God saying that man has become like God or man has become like one among us, the three? I will not give you the answer to that. I will leave it to your interpretation. Now, in order to understand the nature of God, we need to understand that God is spirit. And when he made us, he made us in his image and likeness. Okay? Image and likeness. Also because his likeness is that he rules over and he made us rule over. And God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into him and man became a living soul now wow did you see that 
that scripture describes man in his entirety. I told you we're talking about spirit, soul, and body. I know that many people don't understand the difference because people use these terms interchangeably. You know, I felt it so deeply in my spirit. I felt it so deeply in my soul. <laughs> people use it, uh, use these terms interchangeably and they don't really understand exactly what they're talking about. So man is a spirit. We've established that. Okay. God formed man from the dust of the ground. Do you know why you are buried into the ground when you die? Have you ever realized that it's a very common thing for people to be buried into the ground when they die? And when someone rots, they turn into dust. This is because you were made from the dust. Are you aware that a good percentage of the dust under your bed is your skin? You can Google that. A good percentage of the dust under your bed is your skin. It shows you where you come from and where you're going back. Okay, so God formed man from the dust of the ground, the body, the body that we can see, the one that goes back. Now, why is it that when people die, we say, ah, they found his dead body? Why don't people say they found him dead? Of course, they can say that, but we understand <laughs> that a dead body is an empty shell of the man that once lived, right? Because something has left. So God breathed something into that body to make it a living soul. So the body is the container of the breath of life. The breath of life is your spirit. God put a part of himself into you that formed you, the spirit, and he containerized it in your body. And now when he merged the two, the spirit and the body, I want you to understand it's deeper than just that. He's merging two realms. He's merging the realm from where he comes and the realm he has created. And when he puts them together, they form a soul. And the reason why you are alive to be able to identify, see, feel, think, to be conscious, to be conscious rather, is, part of, is because of your soul. Your soul is the consciousness of man, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Without the soul, without those three things, you are as good as a dead man. So the soul is the intersection point, the meeting point of the spirit and the body. That's why some of you don't realize when you have thoughts that they are not yours because your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And so your mind is the, is the entry point. Whatever you feed your mind with influences your, your mind, your will, and it influences your emotions. Whatever you feed your soul, your mind with, will also influence your body because it's coming from your mind. So the mind is the entry point of the soul. If anyone from outside of this realm wanted to tell you anything, that's the entry point. <laughs> well, I hope you're getting this thing. If you're understanding, please leave your comment there. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave your comments there. Spirit, soul, body. What's your understanding? The spirit is the real you. If you listen to this, if you listen to this, internalize this knowledge. Say it. My spirit is the real me. I have a soul and I live in a body. Because one day your body will die, but your spirit will live on. Have you noticed the story that Jesus tells in uh, must be Luke 16 where he talks about Lazarus and the rich man and he talks about how the rich man died and uh, went to hell and his body was he didn't go with his body there's a world after death so understanding the difference the spirit soul and body is really important because there are communications God has deposited into your spirit but your soul needs to be developed to a place where it's either in sync with your, you know, you can develop your soul to be in sync with your spirit or with your body. There's a reason why the Bible says we are not uh, led by sensory perception, but by faith. We move not by faith. We, not, we, we move by faith and not by sight. Sight meaning sensory perception, what we see, what we hear, what we feel. Those things do not determine the state of our mind. I'll show you one last scripture from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the Bible also in Hebrews says that uh, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds that no man should tell the other no God. This is why we have a conscience. If a man kills another, they will feel it. They know. You don't have to tell them you are wrong for doing this. They don't ha- need to have been told. It's like, remember the first time you stole meat from the pot? You remember? How did your heart feel? <laughs> you knew it was wrong. <laughs> That's because he has put his laws in your mind and in your heart. Your heart is your spirit. Now for you to understand and grow to be in sync with your spirit, you need to do what the Bible is saying here. Renewing of the mind. Because when you renew your mind, you can get it to a point where it understands what's in your spirit. It understands what God is saying to your spirit and what God is putting there. It can begin to understand. So renewing your mind, you need a mindset. What you don't understand is that it's about a mindset. (laughs) If you're not following the podcast, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and share. Tell me what you think about Bible talks and what you would like to Learn about what you'd like me and Bruce to discuss when he's back. So for now, bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.